Hi guys, this is Fazan from Great Learning, and welcome to this session. So before we start, am I guys audible? Please just write a yes quickly in the chat section. In the meantime, uh, GL has come up with a initiative, the Great Learning initiative. Okay, so you guys can check in. there there are 80 plus courses available so you guys can check okay just quickly light a yes so that we can get started so i can see a lot of yeses so let's start since we today's session is all about creating a game using java so since there will be some beginners here as well so let's go through the agenda first what are the things that we are going to use in this session okay So first we are going to study about conditional statements right what are those conditional statements then we will uh, see loops then branching statements then object in classes then strings then arrays and then hash set and then one once we are done with this thing right so once we have completed these things we will try to implement this in our game okay now let's get started right you guys can hear me right Okay now let's get started So the first thing that we are going to study is conditional statement okay we must know that how if and else works these are two keywords in java right so first if you can see the diagram that is on the right hand side so we will check using the conditional statement right we have a condition and based upon that we will check if the condition is true then we 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 follow some steps if it's not then we go to the next step that is the else part okay there can be multiple else right that is called else if statements that if can be nested as well okay so this is a basic stuff that we are going to cover since some of uh, might you might you might not know these things so that's what we are covering this right cool then how to write these if statements basically we have a class we will cover what a class is what this public static void mean means a little bit of brief about everything right so in the main section in this main function or method which is called so we have in uh, int value equal to 5 right value 1 equal to 5 and value 2 equal to 6 then we are checking if value 1 plus value 2 is equal to 11 right so basically here the condition that we are checking are these values equal to 11 if yes then we print the numbers are equal else that then we will print numbers are not equal right this is simple stuff now we are going to use switch in our game so what is the switch statement right switch is a conditional statement which is used in place of multiple else if statements right so basically if you have multiple paths right if this condition is true then do this else if this else if this so multiple else if statements can be replaced by switch case right it's easy for us right cool so the this switch case what how does it work basically in this switch case we have an expression right so basically this expression is the condition that we are going to check upon this value we will just use the cases right case 1 do this case 2 do this then break out of it right so depending upon the answer evaluated by the condition case code gets executed right it's easy right you guys can hear me right so it's easy stuff right so we are covering basically the this easy stuff first so that we can easily uh, when i will show you the game you can easily uh, code along with me right every case must be followed by a break unless it is not required as to as per your logic right so basically how this switch case works Uh, as i can see that some of you are new to the software field okay let me uh, again uh, just start from this switch case basically switch is a replacement to multiple ifs okay cool so if we break if we don't break out of this then all the statements will be executed right so all of these will be executed then the default and the end we have the default right default is optional right if we do if we if none of the cases will match then the default will be executed what is the what is the value of this what what a value can be right this is case val value can be integer it can be character or it can be a string cool so now let's go ahead and check the example 
so this is a demo in which we have defined a string day equal to sunday right sun so based on that sun we will execute one of these cases right so as you can see it won't match with month tuesday wednesday thursday fry or set then finally it matches with the sun and the sun will be executed once it is executed we will break out of this right so once we have uh, once we broke out of this switch case the output will be printed to us that is today is sunday cool this is switch now for loops quickly go ahead with the for loops that this is this is basically a looping condition wherein if we want to execute some code continuously based upon some condition right if we want to execute something five times right so based on that condition we will execute it so basically how it's written for then the initialization then the termination then the updation we will check the demo then the things will be clear okay so this is a for loop demo basically here and we have defined for loop right so for loop int itr is equal to 0 then itr less than 5 itr plus plus the initialization phase is this itr equal to 0 then what is the condition itr less than 5 okay it will be executed 5 times 0 1 2 3 4 5 5 at 5 when it comes it will just break out of the loop okay then what we will do we will just increment our pointer every time cool so as you can see the current iteration is 0 the current iteration is 1 2 3 4 the fifth iteration didn't print right cool now the while loop basically while loop is again similar to for loop but for loop is better than while loop since we are going to use this in our code that we are going to create at the end of this session that we are going to create a game right so in that what there's a one specific thing that i want to tell you regarding the while if a if i have written in the expression that while expression nothing i haven't written any expression i wrote just true how many times will you think it will execute just quickly write in the chat section quickly so it will be executed multiple it will be executed in finite times unless and until we will break out of it good so then the expression is checked and then we execute the statement then we increment our pointer as you can see in the code we have written int count is equal to 0 then while count is less than 5 then we printed our statement then we when then the pointer has been incremented every time right so rather than using it in the same line like for as you can see rather than using it the same line we have written it in multiple lines right the initialization is done, done up uh, before the while condition then the condition is checked then the pointer has been incremented okay cool so this is all about uh, while loop now the break statement basically i told you any uh, these statements break branching statements are required once if we are executing some uh, sequence of for example if you want to break out of the that infinite loop condition how do you do that based upon break you can use break statement right while this condition met you can break out of the loop similarly this can be written in with the with for loops while loops okay so how it is written so if we can check in the earlier case we were printing 0 1 2 3 4 now what i have done here based upon when the iterator that is itr is equal to 3 we just break out of the loop so then the loop condition that is out of the loop has been printed so after uh 3 nothing has been printed right 4 is not printed 3 is not printed right so this is a branching statement we can break out of the loop so similar to this is the return statement right but what is the difference between a return statement and a what this thing break statement right so if you can see in this case i have used a count right variable when it's equal to 3 then i returned will this be printed out of the loop will it print quickly write in the chat section quickly guys so that we can move to the coding stuff this is uh, just uh, i'm just briefing about everything that i'm going to use in our code so that it's easier for you and it's easier for me to let you guys understand right so these things will not be printed out of the loop condition will not be printed it will just main function we have written with the main function it exits from the program it won't be writing anything okay is there any problem just quickly write 
Are you guys able to hear me? Are you guys able to hear me? As I can see, just quickly light a small yes, any one of you, if you can hear me quickly, 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 guys. We have to cover a lot of things, so I don't want to waste time. Okay, cool. Cool, I see a yes. So there's a lag between uh, your when you are posting the thing, there's a 10 second lag. So you guys have to bear with it. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 guys. So the return statement is clear to you, right? Cool. So now what is a class? So now we come into the um, basic stuff, right? So the class. A class is nothing but a real and real life entity. What do you mean by this? Basically, here we are using the first programming pillar that is object oriented pillar that is the encapsulation. Basically, we are, for example, if you might have uh, used that capsule thing, right? So which we used to have uh, when it's like a medicine medicine, right? So that medicine in which there was some kind of a powder inside the capsule, right? So that means we are encapsulating whatever is in, inside the uh, inside uh, inside that tablet right so basically it will a class will act in a similar fashion basically a class will contain rather than powder it will contain data members and methods what is a data member basically any variable that you have written for example int right for example if you have written int right so int is there int val equal to 5 right so this this is a data member for example float x uh, equal to what do you say 5.5 that is the data member what are methods for example you are printing their setters and getters all these methods right are called methods which whatever is inside a class if a function is inside a class it's not called a function it's called a method right so what is the keyword that we use to declare a class so the keyword is right so the keyword is basically the class okay as I can see, there's a question regarding what is the difference between a for and a branching statement. Basically, what a for is, for is a looping condition. Basically, what a for deals with, for example, if you're trying to iterate five times, so you can write it inside a for or a while loop. So it will loop around it. Once you have looped and you want, you don't want all the statements, that is, you don't want one, two, three, four, five to be printed. You just want to print one, two, three. So at that time, you can just quickly branch out of it, right? So the branching statement which helps in it is break or you can use condition based upon uh, or you can use you can either use break or you can either use continue. So based upon your program, you can use those things. So branching statement is a different thing when you try to break out of your loops that can be while that can be for cool. So as per the naming convention, the class, every uh, class, how we write a class, basically we write a class keyword then the first letter of every word, for example, I am, I am writing a class that is my first code, right? So M will be capital, F will be capital and C will be capital. Every first letter of your class name, okay? Class uh, in that class name, every word of it rather, okay? In Java, there can be multiple classes, right? But there will be only single public class. Why public class? Because if you have seen this public static void main, right? So in that class, you don't use any rather i will just explain the next slide then the things will be clear right if you see this is a class container here are data members int weight string and then there's color there's double price right so all of these are right so all of these are our data members then we have methods uh, set color set price then we finally print out all those with the help of print function right print method rather Okay, this is a class, uh, basically the structure of how a class looks. Cool. Then what, how we define, how we access the elements inside a class. Basically, we will use an object. It's a physical entity, rather, uh, which what was in the case of class, it was a real life entity with, in which everything was included. Now, whatever is included in it, how we can with use a new keyword. And then there's a container that you can see uh, with a bracket sign, right? So basically, Whenever you encounter this new keyword, 
a memory will be allocated right the memory will be allocated and then the constructor of the class will be called so what is this constructor so constructor is a thing which is used to initialize your data members right so you can initialize your data members with the help of these constructors so every time when you create an object a constructor will be called automatically right if you haven't written any constructor in your class a default constructor will be called now let's talk about string string is nothing but a sequence of characters it's a class in java right in other programming language we don't have these things right there was no no such thing as string right but in here in java we have a string class so you can create how we can create a string it can be done using two ways or we can use two ways right so the first thing is string hello right and the next thing is string new then string hello the constructor will be called right so what is the difference between these two so we in strings whenever we try to create there is a special term used against it that is string constant pool so this this thing might be new for everyone i suppose so let me just brief a bit more about it okay so this string buffer uh, string constant pool is inside a heap right every time when we use this uh, the first condition that we use the first way that we use there will be a copy created in a heap so every time when a new keyword is encountered a memory is created on a heap right so but in strings it will be created in heap as well as in this string constant pool okay so if it's not there if next time you wrote string str hello it will be already in the string buffer pool so if it's already in the string buffer pool a copy will be created only in heap and in the second way nothing will be done in the string constant pool or only the memory will be allocated on the heap okay so how you declare a string this is how we declare char uh, character array then we initialize it uh, h e l l o right this is how we do it okay now string is immutable what do you mean by this this uh, once you have defined your string and initialized it you can't manipulate it how if you want manipulate it you have to reinitialize it okay so these are some basic stuff you my you should know right how we do comparison basically if you what we if we use if we use this thing right a double equal to sign in variables right if a is equal to equal to b then it will check the value but it's not in the case of strings in this this will be this will be double equal to sign will check for the reference and with the help of dot equals method we can check if they are having the same content or not there is another comparison method that is dot compare to that is compare to method compares the content lexicographically if the uh, if the string 1 is greater than the string 2 then the number will you the, it will return a positive number if it's less than it will return negative number then if it's zero that means both are string are equal cool so how you will write it public void main then we create a string and then you created two strings right then if you see is s1 and s2 equal double equal to whatever the first statement first print and sop no they are not right so because it's checking for the reference as we have created one with the help of new keyword and one with the without new keyword right so their references will be different if it's done with s2 and s3 it will return true right because they have same references right i told you if it's not in the string buffer if it's already in the string buffer pool then in that string constant pool it will not be created again right then the uh, references of both these s2 and s3 will be same that's why it's returning a true and s1 and s3 are these equal no that's not right right so but the content is same so that's why when we used s1 equals to s3 it's returning as the true right and if you do a compare to both these methods are e both these values are equal so if you can see if it's equal then it will return a zero so that's why it's a zero so i can see another question so before we start we will let me cover that thing as well what is an object so basically object is nothing but a instance of a class what do you mean by that what if you want to access anything inside your class right anything be it anything right we are, rather you can use data members and methods only inside a class now how would you access those things because there may there might be that these things will be private so you can't use inside a class you can use those things but outside the class you can't use so how you will access those 
inside your class or how you access those data members and methods outside of your class with the help of object. So that's the object and this is how we access the data members and methods inside your class. Cool. So now the string methods, these are very important methods, right? So basically we have the first method that is uh, to calculate the length, for example, of this today's Monday, the length of this is what 16. Uh, then to lower case, we will just uh, do all the things that are written today is Monday, it will be written into lower case. Similarly, upper case will change it to in the upper upper case, right? In the cap, uh, if you say the capital letters, right? Uh, to T O D A O, right? So you get the point, right? You feel me, right? So uh, string contains, so it basically sees if this thing is present in that string or not. So basically it will check is Monday, is Monday that's the string, is it present in the string str? Yes, it is. So it returns true. So what is the index of Monday? It will return what is the pointer, uh, what is the address or what basically in strings every, uh, there will be some values associated with, right? Uh, there will be indexing starts from zero. So the ninth index is returned because it's there, Monday is starting from that point. Then how we check, how we check the, this thing, right? Uh, the substring. So if this, uh, whatever is in this, uh, index from four index to eight index will be printed. So that's uh, and then the replace basically you just replace Monday with Tuesday. Okay, cool. So now the arrays basically we are going to use arrays uh, in this co in this problem, right? Cool. So now we are coming closer and closer to our pro problem that is the main objective of this uh, class, right? So basically. Now a linear data structure is arrays, a linear data structure, everything is stored in the continu contiguous memory allocations, right? We know these things, right? These are simple stuff, right? So I don't want anyone to, uh, I mean to say, not follow what I'm saying. If anyone is not getting what I'm saying, or is this any, everyone is understanding each and everything that I'm trying to say, because once I will go into the code, then at that time you can relate these things, okay? So one D array. So how you define it? Data type, var name, then new data type size right? A 1D array is defined in that way. How we define a 2D array? Basically, instead of two brackets, that is square brackets, uh, instead of one square bracket that was in the in the first thing, right? The array declaration, then in the 2D array, there will be two square brackets. And in that two, in the next uh, new, the next after this thing, right? New data type, in that size, we define the rows and the columns. Okay, cool. So now, this is some basic stuff, guys. I know you know these things. And this might be boring for some. So I have to do because this is all there might also be some beginners, right? So you have to deal with it. I don't I, I don't know how to start without completing these things. Okay. So advantages, you all know these, right? Random access, easy sorting, iteration, replacement of multiple variables, right? Disadvantages, size is fixed, difficult to insert and delete. Why? Why it's difficult to insert and delete? Quickly write in the chat section quickly, guys. I know you know these stuff. So why? Uh, so then if the capacity is more than the occupancy is less, what do you mean by this thing? If you have defined some size, right? Say you have, you have defined five and you are only entering two values. So the memory will be wasted, right? Needs can uh, contiguous memory allocation. What do you mean by this thing? If chunks of memory is available here and there, you can't, okay, you can't use that in, in place of, in case of arrays, right? Or rather, if we talk about linked list, that can be used, but not in case of this. Right? Cool. So why it's difficult to insert and delete? Coming back to that. So basically, if you want to insert anything, for example, you say you have five, uh, you have four, uh, the size of array is five and you have inserted four elements. So the index four, uh, five is available, but you want to insert it at index three. So you need to swap, swap it on the right hand side, right? So that swapping is required for both the array in, in insertion as well as deletion. That's why it's difficult to insert and delete. Uh, now you might be thinking that, that how is, how is, how is it difficult, right? Question, right? But we are talking about a size uh, of array that is five. Now let's say you have a size that is uh, array, array size is hundred. So you see how many swaps you need to do. So that's why they're difficult for storing information in linear fashion. We are the application suitable for those which needs, which needs frequent searching. Good. So these are applications. This is how we defined an array. You, you guys be, might be knowing this thing. This is very easy stuff, guys. So basically how you declare an array int 
double brackets then new int size of the row and the column then there is a 1d array then we use a scanner class to receive a, to, uh, to for the input thing right so then we check then we use two loops to iterate to insert values in the pen of price and then one loop for the batch right then we print it with the help of two loops right so this is easy stuff so for inserting we use two loops right the first loop for the row and the second loop for the columns in case of 2d array right so in case of 1d array there is nothing there is a single array that is needed cool so now let's go into some advanced topics that is it's not advanced but for the beginner it might look like advanced okay cool so a hash set hash set stores elements as per hash function what is a hash function basically hashing will be required hash function is nothing that we use some kind of a uh, procedure or some kind of, uh, with the help of that we can insert our elements right we can store our elements basically if i am using x modulus 10 so this can be a hash function right the x is the element so whenever i get an element i store it based on that hash function cool so on based on that hash function i will store it in the elements insertion order is maintained so what do you mean by this thing so insertion order is not maintained what do you mean by this thing so if you are inserting 10 20 30 so in a hash set it's not necessary that it will be in the same order that is 10 20 30 the order will change it helps for that's why we are using this because of this statement it helps in fetching the elements in a constant time right so if you want to access something or fetch something from a hash set it will require a constant time so it's in util package we all know that right and so basically there are some predefined classes that are present so when uh, in, similarly hash set is present in one of those packages which come along with the help of when we uh, install our uh, jdk right it is uh, there are some packages the util package contains this hash set class okay cool so hash set how we declare it uh, the constructor is this the new hash set thing the type is the type of for example if you're trying to store integers in your hash set you can use that okay cool now there are some methods right the size of how we can check the size of the hash set is empty contains add remove these are all methods right to remove element to clear a hash set uh, the contains will check if the hash set contains object or not is empty checks for the empty thing right these are all basic basic things that you need to know so how you define it hash set integer hs new hash set integer some uh, some might skip these uh, the end of the the braces that new hash set then there are true less than sign and the greater than sign basically you can put an integer on it or it's optional okay for the older versions it won't work for the new versions it will work okay cool how you add hs.add 512 all those things cool so this is how we deal with the hash set and how we define so anyways if you don't understand anything now let's go and start a game cool so now we are finally here so everyone just give me a quick yes that you understood or even if you don't understood just give me that you are clearly understanding me okay i will speak slowly okay no problem so these this was the basic stuff that's why i was rushing through it because now we need to code the game now we are into the game okay cool guys now let's start so the first thing that we are creating we are trying to create a tic-tac-toe okay basically you might have played it in your uh, childhood right wherein you put three lines uh, three horizontal lines and three vertical lines then you insert values in it what values a cross or a zero a zero sign or a cross sign right so that's what we are going to create now so the first thing that comes up into our mind is that we need that thing right that structure so that's what we are going to implement. So I'm using Sublime. You can use Notepad or IDE or anything, right? So the first thing that you need is a class, right? So we wrote this class, right? Let's call it tick, tack, sorry. Okay, cool. So now a class has been created. So the first thing that comes up in your mind is that we require a method right the main method that is public static wide main right just follow along everything will be clear that why i started that 
everything that I started from this uh, the, from the starting of this lecture, what was that all about? You will soon get an idea. Okay. Okay. Cool. So this thing is done. The our main method is done. Let's first save it. Let's save it on the desktop so that it's easy for me to find this thing. Okay. Cool. So this is tic tac toe dot Java, and now it's done. Cool. So now what we are going to do. So now what we are going to do, we are going to create a 2D array. Okay. So let's create a 2D array of characters. So nothing that is character. Then the name of that, right? First the two brackets, right? For the 2D array, that's the thing that we need. You remember this thing, right? Then this is the array that we are going to. Let's be more reasonable with our names, right? C B O R D board, the game board, right? Now, need to visualize certain things. So there are two ways to create an array, right? You can either use, uh, I mean to say, you can use a static or a dynamic thing. Not a dynamic thing. You can just uh, ask the user to input those values. Right now, we just need the game board. We need just need that structure kind of a thing, right? So rather than asking for the user, let's try to create it on our own and let's define it here. So basically there will be three things so let's follow along first i will write it then i will try to explain this thing to you okay make sense guys okay this is the dash sign and then another two braces and then a dash sign okay cool so why what I have written here, right? What is this thing? This is the thing that first I'm using a blank sign. Okay. There's a blank sign wherein we will put either a cross or a or a zero, right? So then there's a line that is that separates these two things. So basically what we are trying to create here is that we are using five spaces. Why? First for the value, then a dash, which is a separation, then a value, right? Then there is a value in this thing. Then there will be another value and then there will be a dash sign. Then there will be another value. Cool. So this is the first row. Then now let's replicate it for all the rows. So you might be thinking for a tic-tac-toe game, we might be needing only three rows, right? But we will implement it in a better way so that there is a separation and we will understand how this works. Okay, cool. So five rows and five columns. So now you'll be thinking, we are not going to use these values, right? So basically what I'm going to use here is a dash, dash sign, then a dash sign here, then a dash sign here. So this will separate the above row with the below row. And similarly, we will implement the same thing here cool so, so once we have created this now let's try to print it so, so basically rather than inserting everything or using the same thing for for our every right, writing everything in our what in our main is not a good thing right you need to create we will go with the object oriented kind of a thing right we will just use a method instead of printing everything or using the same method main method for writing everything we will try to use what a different method here we will insert all our values there so what what, is, what will be that method called let's call it print hyphen game board g board right or print print board let's keep it simple for printing, printing the board and, and what will be the arguments that this will accept so basically we will send him the game board so that cool game board done cool guys now let's create this function you see i haven't defined any object right i am just calling this function with the help of its name that can be only done if that method is a static method so quickly let's go ahead and create a static method which is print board 
and it will accept a character array which is of 2D nature right and let's call it gboard again okay cool guys and now we will use those two loops i told you we are going to use everything that we studied in this session earlier cool what are those two loops for int i equal to 0 right i less than how we we, we can, can write 5 and 5 but, but that's not a right way to write it right so we will use a function that is dot length to calculate the length so what is our this is a g g board dot length this will give us a ln g length okay cool then parenthesis then i plus plus cool guys this will give me the number of rows similarly i have to do it for the columns as well but how we will get columns int i equal to 0 i less than g board right then this thing will calculate the first row and then the first rows columns right so this will give us the number of columns okay i hope you are following along and you guys understand everything so j will be now right so this is j and this is j cool so now once we have looped around then you can easily use a system dot out dot print ln statement rather than using print ln statement we will use print why the question is why because every time it it uh, it just prints the first element then it does the new line right we don't want that we want him to print everything in a single row then then in the next row we should start from the beginning so that's why what, what i'm going to write here we will be using g board right and then for the i the row and then for the j the column thing cool and then once it is done so i haven't written any curly braces you know if there is only single assist, uh, statement associated with for or any uh, conditions like if there's a statement with a use wherein i have used if if there's only single statement i can the curly braces are optional and now what i'm going to use here is just a print ln statement okay i'm just copying it and then I'm going to use here a system of print. Now let's see what I what we have created until this point. We will save this file. Open your command prompt. Go into that file first. Okay. Okay. Just a minute. We will go into that file. Here it is. Okay. We will go into this tic tac toe, and we will write here. Uh, it's on the desktop, right? And then we will write here cmd. It will open up and then what we will do we'll write java c for compiling that is the name of the file now the name of the file is tic tac toe dot java let's see if we are getting any errors or not okay the package might not be defined yeah got it okay the packages that we need are util packages because array is in that class so we miss that you see how easy it is to know what is the problem and then act accordingly right so we will just write here import java dot util dot star so i can write arrays as well but i will use the global thing so everything which is in that package will be imported here okay cool so now let's give it a check public static void main done and then the string args then we have created a character array g board then every time we have done this loop this this thing and then the end of the statement then we're calling the g board thing cool cool guys we are on the right track so now let's go back and let's see if it gives error this time or not invalid method declaration method required to be a static okay guys we just missed one thing what is that it's not having a return type okay i don't know what i'm doing okay cool cool guys so now g board okay i can't spell i think board spelling is wrong so okay you see b o a r d cool b o a r d 
Uy. D O A R D. Both thing. Print D O A R D. Done. Multiple audio complaints. B O A R D. Okay, cool guys. Let's give it a check if anyone can see any errors. Quickly, can you guys, if you guys are able to hear me properly or not, just write it quickly. I am getting multiple noise complaints. Quickly, just write in the chat section, guys, so that we can just follow along this thing. And we are running out of time as well. Quickly, guys. Quickly write yes or no anything guys I'm waiting for you. Quickly guys till then I'm just trying to figure out what is happening okay. So cool guys let's start let's try to run this thing again. G board okay P O A R D fine let's run this again okay finally we have removed all the errors and now let's try to compile it so you see this is a structure that we will we were trying right so now we have a structure there's a three uh, three things right the first column the second column the third column the fourth and the fifth sixth seventh eighth so cool now let's go back to this thing where is it yeah so you see we have created what first we have created our board right then we printed it in a separate function so now our board has been created now let's try to insert our values so now for that we will use a function called placeholder so this placeholder what is does it will receive three arguments right the first argument is that so it will be receiving is a board right so in that board then we will place a position in it as well what is the position basically where you are placing your cross right is it are you placing it in the first second column third column fourth position fifth position sixth seventh eighth or ninth so the second argument it will receive that position okay the third is that the user what is the user basically it's nothing but are you playing are you playing or is it the CPU plane? Okay, this is the only thing that is we have to deal with this. Okay, cool. So now let's go quickly in our sublime and now let's try to implement that function. So basically now once it is done, let's minimize it so that you guys are not aware of how much code we have written. Okay, cool guys. So now let's try to implement that static function again. So not now what we write static wide placeholder okay where is the place let's call it simple name then there is a there happens thing right placeholder okay now this placeholder will receive three arguments what is the first argument it will receive the board right that g board that we created the game board right then the second thing it will receive is the position okay int position it can be a uh, it can be any position in the board so let's keep it simple let's write it int pos a pos then the string user are you uh, are you playing or is the cpu playing okay will be defined by this thing now the first thing that we define here is a character why a character here this will this is a i mean to say the symbol that we are going to use when we are trying to implement that thing Let's for the sake of simplicity, let's try to keep it what? Let's try to keep it x. So the first thing is x. Cool. Now let's check if the user dot equals, you see why we why we covered for first those things, right? Is let's keep it u. Y O U. If it's u, then 
we will try to place right it checks the condition and now what we will try to place the symbol inside the symbol let's try to place x okay now the symbol is a character so now let's try to place it, it's you that we are choosing that whenever you play you will you you want to place and rotate here okay then there is a user set that we are going to create that is, that will take care of the things that what are the positions that you have entered basically you can what are the winning positions let me define it later so right now i'm just just defining this thing then i will tell you why i have written this thing we are adding this thing in our hash set we will define this hash set globally what will be the position basically the position that we are entering right for the user similarly we have to do it for the cpu as well we will check if the user dot equals right this thing paste it here okay so now it's not you that is playing who is playing cpu let's put it as cpu there we will check if the user contains cpu or not if it's if it's containing cpu then what will be writing we will be writing sim okay symb syb equal to what is the value we are going to use it's an o sign or a zero sign let's keep it o okay cool now we will be placing o now there is a computer set also associated with it what what do you mean by this thing things will be clear just give it some time okay we will set that we will keep a record of all the steps all the positions that cpu has occupied and similarly user set ur set will keep the positions of all the all the positions that you have filled in that board so that we can find the winning condition at the end cool it will make sense okay now what we will write here is the position that we got cool so you see how we are trying to define each and everything right we have used hash set here we have we will be defining it globally here let me just define it for you quickly so we will define a hash set here what is the hash set how we define it so basically it will be of integers right the position is the integer right as you can see integer cool and it will be called you are set that the all the entries that you have filled equal to new hash set why we are using hash set because it's taking uh, for fetching the elements it's of con it takes constant amount of time so we are also keeping in mind the uh, time complexity thing right so now let's just quickly go ahead and copy this thing again and just print it here okay cool so now this will be a comp set for using rather than passing it to each and every method what i am doing i am placing it globally so that it is by default every method in this class will know this thing right will know what is a comp set what is the user set basically it contains nothing but your positions in that game board and the computer that is cpu's position in that game board that is why i have written this thing now we are adding this thing in that game board okay so cool are we on the same page right so basically this is used to do these things now once we have added these things in our comp set and user set right just check the spellings okay cool we are we are on the track cool now once we have done this thing now we will use a switch case why a switch case things will be clear so what a switch case will what uh, will be the expression or the condition in the switch case it will be the position now rather than using indexes that is 0 0 is the first position then 0 2 is the second position why you see this blank space here that i'll be highlighting we will be only able to use nine spaces now right so only that will we what we will do for those things we will just place either a zero or either a cross or a zero and what are the available positions for us these are only nine position so position will be given to the switch case and then based on this position in the switch case what we will be writing we will be writing our cases so if it's case 1 what we will do, what will we do we will just place okay not a go to we will just place in the board what position at what position let's keep it 0 0 okay 
now zero at zero zero position we will place what symbol that's why i wrote because it can be either cpu or it can be either u right so that's why a symbol is put here cool now then the next important statement is the break statement then we don't want to just keep executing all the cases now what we will do we will just copy paste this case nine times and then we will just change the values okay so two three four five six seven eight nine cool now the second case what will be the second case it will be in the zeroth row and the second column we are placing because the first uh, zero one what is uh, what have we written we have written the uh, that line right to separate this uh, this position from this position right you feel me right cool so fourth now what will be here the it will be the third position rather than using this zero zero everywhere i am using a simpler and much easier way that is the switch case and on that in in that switch case i am using these positions to refer to the array locations right so similarly what we are going to write here for we are running out of time and will can should i or will i write one zero here no because that entire row has been used for separation right so that's why what i will use here two so because the first uh, the second row that is used for separation so this will be two two and then it will be two four cool and then this will be a switch case number okay just give it two two and this will be four five and this will be the position sixth this will be seventh and now what are we going to use do uh, should i use three here no four because third row is again used for separation so four zero four two four four cool cool guys now we have placed our values successfully right so if anyone is having any doubt just tell me right here right now okay so then again we have to use the default statement right default keyword is very important in case of switch so default and then nothing what i will do if some smart guy like you and me will put something other than the values that have been defined here so we have to let him know that you have put it a wrong value right so then we will use a println statement saying it's an invalid input okay cool guys now once this is done let me just change this thing 7 this is 8 and this is 9 cool guys so now we have created this thing as well now after this switch case now we will be printing our board should i write two loops again no that's why what we wrote here let's separate this line again okay this do the print ln so that everything is a little bit separate so that there will be no jumbling right so let's put a print ln here and now let's try to call that function which we have already defined for printing the board print board function what it will it will receive it will received an argument which is already present in this function right in this method what is that g board right and then uh, things will be on track okay cool guys so now what we have done here now let's minimize this thing as well okay cool we have written nothing right you can see we have written nothing so you don't have to be worried okay cool guys so now let's start our uh, again that thing we were here so where are we yeah here so what have we have done we have created a board we placed it with either u or it's a cpu then we put the position in the hashed sets as well so that we can keep a track of what are the positions that i used and what are the positions that cpu used cool then we just printed all the positions that have what we have what the user got from the input right now what we will write in the main method this is the important thing so in the main method we will first receive an input right you will be printing in that board right you will be using some value that you are going to assign to that position right for that what we will use here 
let's first try to code this then i will just explain you again each and everything so this is take going to take much more than 45 minutes because we wasted some of the time okay cool guys so now what we are going to write in our main method so basically in our main method we will first what we will do we will ask the user to input right for the position what are the position that you are going to put your value right we will use a scanner class we know how to use it scanner is just for inputting the value so new then scanner again we are going to use a scanner right scanner this thing cool guys so then system system dot in so now what this statement does if you have uh, it will ask the user to print some value so once he has printed this value right then what are we were going to do so after one if i play once then cpu plays then it's again my turn right so that's why i need here a while loop that is of true so it will execute always unless and until someone wins right it can be a draw it can be a it can you can win or cpu can win right so for that we will use a while loop so that it keeps on executing right first i will play then cpu then you uh, then i then cpu then i then cpu so unless and until someone wins so we will use a break statement you see how we are trying to connect the dots right so again what we will write system dot out dot print ln right print ln cool and now what we are going to do here so we will ask the user to enter some value again okay checking the winning condition the winning condition what will be the check winning condition it will be nothing but we are checking if the user has win or the cpu is winning okay this is for that thing we will define it later okay so once we are done with this what we will be checking if the result set is uh, let's do this thing result set is greater than length and then we are doing if it's greater than 0 you won't understand this thing but i am writing this for the sake that we are running out of time okay cool guys i will explain it everything each and everything line every line will be explained just bear with me this is taking a lot of time i know you have to just bear with me for a little while so i will try to finish it quickly okay guys so done so what is this we will explain it i will explain it okay so this is the condition that we are going to check now we have entered the values for the user now we have to do the same thing for that computer guy right the cpu so what i am going to do i'm just going to repeat this thing but this time is he going to accept a value from the that input thing no what we will do we will just ask the for i am using a math class here that will generate a random number so we are going to use a function that is generate random number okay this random number function will be called and then a computer will get a random number so once he will get a random number then we will check in the user set if this comp position is available or not right so that's what we are going to do comp comp position is available in that or not so then the comp position will be checked in the comp set as well the comp position will be checked so now what does this line means so once we get a input uh, a random number random number can be also repeated right so we will check if those two numbers are already in that set or not because we don't want anyone either the user or the cpu to repeat right so usually what happens do we get if something is wrong from the users uh, cpu's end so we don't get any reenter for the user right so we can easily remove thing so what happens we are always accept, expected to answer not neither the cpu so we will remove these lines and he will himself generate those numbers cool guys are you getting my point here what i'm trying to say so now what i will do here we will again call this function random function because he needs to refill the number okay cool so once this is done 
we are done with this thing then we place again what in in place of this user position what will be the position the comp position right and what will be the user the user will be cpu that was what we written what we wrote here right yeah cpu cool so now we will check the winning condition we will explain it later what this winning condition is okay cool guys now let's move ahead and we will just we are done with this thing okay cool guys now let's go quickly back to this thing so we have written the main method we have checked uh, we have placed we have what we did in the main method we placed values for the users as well as well as for the cpu so this thing is done for the user and for the cpu as well now for the cpu we did something that is generate random number so this generate random number is nothing but we will use a random class uh, that is a math dot random class which is already present in the math math class right so what we will do here we will just generate a random number but we'll use a range to define so he can only we will use a, we will restrict that random number from 1 to 9 okay so that he can only input values from 1 to 9 how would we do that it's simple cool guys so again we are not using any object to call a function again so there is another thing that we are going to use there is another method that we are going to use here let's minimize these things okay so now what we are going to do here we are going to define another static method because we are not creating an object we are calling it by the uh, method name that is the class with the help of uh, this is the property of static so you don't have to uh, use this thing and what will be uh, it return it will return an integer right so the random number which is from what which is from which is from 1 to 9 right right guys i know this is getting a bit uh mean to say it's taking time so you have to deal with it guys i could have either started directly from solving this thing so some of you guys might not understand that thing so the maximum range is 9 and the minimum range is what 1 right cool guys so now we will define the range int range is equal to let's define range equal to what range will be max plus min minus 1 right so this will be the range okay guys so then once the range is defined now let's quickly go ahead and uh, write the result that is the range that what we got from that math uh, the with the help of math class we'll just write math dot random right this will give us a random number but we will multiply this thing with the range so that we can get some values okay we'll get some values cool 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 guys and we will just type cast it because a random number whenever the math dot random is called it will just return a double so we are type casting it and then we will plus the minimum number and that's it we generated a random number successfully cool guys and once a random number is generated we will just use the return keyword to return that result okay so now it will be called uh, once this is called cpu will generate random numbers with the help of this thing okay cool guys now there is only one method which is the most important method in this whole section that is the this check winning method that we have called which is not getting any argument so let's quickly go ahead as we are running out of time so let's try to okay is there any problem with this static int get random no nothing cool guys let's try to save this file okay now let's okay is it in the main method or not no it is cool guys we are okay we are done here okay cool so now what we will be doing we will just quick, quickly go ahead and just implement our main method that is what the winning conditions what are the winning conditions static it will return a string why because we have already seen that uh, the uh, this is a uh, whatever we used here let me show you guys so that it's easy for you whatever we have used in this winning condition it is returning something which is we which we then stored in a string so the return type of this check winning is string so we will write string right and what will be the method called 
it will be called check winning right so check sorry guys this is taking a lot of time i know some of my might be thinking of leaving just bear with me it will look beautiful in the end so you can use ai as well here uh, to generate the random numbers that can be also including here so we'll define a hash set so now what are the winning conditions this is the most important thing of this entire program so the winning conditions are first is the row one what will be in the row one what will be the winning conditions so we'll define row one hash set okay just a minute guys this thing is giving me a lot of integer okay where are you here are you cool so done okay now for the row one what is the winning condition one two three right you can win if you get one two three right so nothing you have to do you have to do row dot add one in that row you have to do r1 dot add what you will use two then nothing r1 dot add three so these are all the winning conditions for row one but how many winning conditions you will you be having eight so row one row two row three either you can get a cross 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 in row one in row two in row three then in column one column two and column three and you can get a cross the diagonal elements right two diagonal elements so that's the thing that we will be using four five six seven eight nine so these are all the winning conditions don't be scared okay now let's let's try to change these things quickly so in row two what will be the winning conditions so in row two what will be the winning conditions it will be uh, the second row what will be it uh, four five six right so it will be four then a five then a six cool so similarly for row three what will be the winning conditions it will be seven then it will be eight and then for the row three it will be nine cool so these are all the row, rows are done now for the columns right it will be column one let's change it it is looking a bit messy but uh, the slide deck will be shared with you so that you don't have to go all this thing okay so this is c1 and this is c1 again so what will be the winning condition for column one so it will be the column one will be one four and seven these will be the winning conditions right so for column one one four and seven cool so for column two what will be the winning conditions okay so column two now we will add uh, in the column two what will be the winning conditions two five and eight right column two will be two five and eight cool guys so this will be for column two okay this will be for column okay column two right guys so now the column third what will be the conditions for column third it will be c3 right it will be also okay i am just writing quickly guys so that you will understand the thing and will be a so add um, so what will be the column third three six and nine so just write here three then the six this will be the winning condition right i don't think if you guys are following along so what will be the column one now will be the diagonal first and then there will be a diagonal two so these are all the winning conditions of this problem so once one of this is extra so let's remove it so for diagonals what will be the winning conditions quickly quickly guys what will be the d1 here and this d1 and this is the d1 again 
so once we have created all the winning conditions right for diagonal will be 1 5 and 9 right this will be the diagonal condition 1 5 and 9 right and for diagonal 2 what will be the winning condition diagonal 2 what will be the winning condition quickly just write this thing here uh, this thing will be d2 d2 and d2 okay cool guys so you feel me right you are following along what will be the diagonal conditions 3 5 and 7 the crisscross thing right uh, you just imagine a 2d array inside your head and then try to figure out what were the spaces that we left and then follow along right so 3 5 and 7 will be the winning condition 3 5 and 7 okay cool guys so this is also done now what we will create we will check if these hash sets are present in the in the hash set these these winning conditions are present in the computer set or in the user set right we have to check these conditions if they are present in that set if they are either in user or in the cpu then we will have a winner so that's what we are going to use we will use a hash set and inside that hash set we will we will use a hash set of hash set okay so hash set of hash set has been defined okay now let's call it a check in this with the help of this check uh, or let's call it the set final set okay let's keep it simple okay new and hash set of hash set right hash set of hash set and then it's done now what will be the values simply add r1 r2 r3 r4 no, uh, sorry so simply just add mm, set dot add r1 set dot add row 2 these winning conditions will be let's put them all in a single hash set set dot add what r3 right and similarly we are going to just copy paste and then replace these things so this thing so this thing done guys okay we are finally closing this thing down now c1 the column thing c2 the column and the c3 then our diagonals d1 and d2 cool guys now we have done this thing now what we will do we will check now what we will do we will loop around this thing and once we will loop around our code will be finished so we will use a for each right and this will give us a hash set let's name it l okay or let's name it a c it will return it will return a hash set every time and we will use the set here from the set it will loop around and we will check if user set right that u set we created at the top dot contains contains all right contains all what this C, this collection, if that thing is collect, uh, contained in this set, I mean to say we are checking if this set is already present in the user set, then he is a winner, right? We will just return, what? Return a string uh, u1. Let's keep it simple. Now, if it's not present, then we will check again, else if. Now, let's see if is this that would that will be also the case if it's present in the computer set right the comp set right if it's present in that set what will we use uh, the contains all method again and we will check if that thing is present in that what computer set then you lose simple right you lose let's not think about the indentation cool now if if that is the case now you think you might have completed this but no there's another condition that we have to check there also will be a case if what happens if the users if the user set that is you are set right you are set dot size 
right there will there is a, also we have to check condition for draw right plus comp okay contains a comp set dot size also if both these sizes are equal to 9 because we have only 9 places then what will happen we will just return what it's a draw cool guys now we have checked all the conditions and finally if the for the first uh, two three times uh, unless and until if none of the condition match we will just return what here and empty string okay that's why we wrote here what let's minimize this thing this very huge looking condition okay now let's just minimize this thing okay okay done so this thing is done now whatever is written in this result we will check if it's greater than zero only then we will print right so that's why i was saying you won't understand it right now but at the end you will be able to understand it now let's save this 172 lines of code and now let's hopefully pray that we won't be getting any error because it's very hectic okay break accepted whatever is in the placeholder class right it is in the placeholder we have missed something quickly check that thing case 2 symbol has been defined it's x are we missing anything just quickly are we missing anything we will be just fine done 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 this is done the case 9 is done this is the case 8 okay break and then the default default is doing this thing cool guys now let's try to run this again let's see if it is not break expected can you guys figure out what this error is okay min and range not a statement okay cool okay just a minute we should have debugged it at every place okay 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 guys what are we doing here this is a break this has this is not a function guys come on should have messaged me or send us something come on guys finally we are able to finish this this thing okay done 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 now there was one more error with this okay we need to typecast it right this is the typecasting that's what i was showing we need to typecast it as well so if i'm doing everything correctly if uh, seems everything seems to be in its place so now let's see if everything runs okay comp set okay it's a position let's go back let's try to import this thing again this beast import java dot i want not star let's do the input output thing as well hash sets has been defined okay your set your set okay i'm using your set but i haven't defined it i'm using user set so let's change this user set quickly go user set user set where we have used this user set let's change this thing we have messed it up badly guys (laughs) 
यूजर सेट यूजर सेट हेयर यूजर डॉट इक्वल्स ओके 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 नाउ वेयर वी हैव यूज इट इन दिस स्टेटमेंट एज वेल ओके हेयर इट इज we might be using it here as well yes use a set use a set comp set use a set okay everything seems to be fine let's see once again if it runs or not hmm can anyone see any errors quickly now let's save this thing let's hope it's a non static variable comp set cannot be referenced okay haven't we defined it static haven't we defined it static no we haven't so that's why we are getting an error static methods cannot be cannot use non static data members so static has to be there so let's save it now we have changed all this user set Okay, user set is gone. Okay, now let's see, guys. Let's hope for the best. Okay, string R E S has been already defined. Where did we define it, guys? Come on. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Here it is. It has been already defined. We just need to change the values. Cool. Oh, finally we did it. So we'll run it. We will have to print a uh, any input. Let's say two. You see, system printed its uh, uh, the CPU played and it's played it at on the value. Now let's try to win. So three. So okay, he's smart enough to put a value on one. So now let's put a nine. Let's try to trick him. So nine we placed in nine. and then we will place at 6 and we will win it okay 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 yeah yes we lost somehow okay guys so this is it all the conditions have been checked right so you just need to figure out all those things so now let's quickly go back and see so this is the main method and this was the thing we inserted all these values inside our right so inside our set we inserted all these values so we are done right so now this code looks absolutely fine so now once we have checked all these conditions then on the basis of that you can decide whether you have completed okay guys that's it i hope you have enjoyed this session because this was a long session so thank you guys thank you so much so you just give it a try and see the slide deck will be shared with you okay guys so thank you